Hey, what's up everyone? Hope you've all been doing really, really well. I know it's been a long time, but just wanted to come back online, make a video and share something with everyone. So please, please bear with me. I know I'm gonna be rusty, might be a little choppy in this video, but I'm gonna do my best. Topic for today's video is gonna be working at a medium-sized software company. It's been my personal experience for about a year and a half, and I have a few things I want to share that I think could be helpful. So without further ado, let's just get straight into it. First, for a little bit of context, we have to kind of be on the same page for what I mean by medium size company. It could mean a lot of things to a lot of different people. What I think a medium sized company is, is a private company, not publicly traded. It's a little past the startup phase. They have a tried and true business model that's being replicated and it's a growing company. So medium sized company, growing, private company, not too big, but definitely beyond the startup mode. To put this even a little more concretely, I would define a medium-sized company with the perspective of a software engineer is a company whose engineering department is in the hundreds. It's not less than a hundred, it's not over a thousand, but something where you can count in the hundreds. And that's the most concrete, maybe data point I can give you. Medium-sized company, hundreds of engineers. And the purpose of this video is just to go over a couple of my observations, as objective as possible. They're not all good, not all bad, but just a couple data points, observations I gathered, and hopefully they're useful to help you make any decision that you might have to make. First thing I wanna talk about is that there's a lot of leverage. And what I mean by leverage is that you can increase your value a lot by understanding the history of the code. Not just understanding how the code works today, but understanding where it came from and its history. If you work at a small startup, you might be writing every single line from scratch with a couple of your teammates. If you work at a big company like Amazon or Google, you might not be able to really fathom the code base too much. You just have to work on your little section. A medium sized company, I would say the code base is very big, but you can still take time and wrap your head around it. It's not too crazy to wrap your head around maybe a million, maybe not millions, but maybe a million lines of code. But just understanding the code in itself is one step, but what I think is extra important, especially to make a bigger impact in a medium-sized group, is you have to understand the history of the code. So who tried to refactor what kind of technical debt? What was refactored well? What wasn't refactored well? Why did someone make an architecture decision like they did? And this takes a lot of digging from an individual level as well as a communication level. To really understand the history of the code, you gotta dig through all the git commits, you guys already know, look at a file, look at the git commits, see who changed the last, and ask them. So you gotta do a lot of that digging yourself. The second part of it is that you really have to find people, be a little proactive in yourself, but find people who worked on different parts of the code base and try to reach out to them, ask them why do things work as they do. Because if you understand the code, not as it is today, but also where it came from, I call it its history. But if you understand that and make an effort to understand that, it's gonna help you a lot. Second thing I want to talk about at a medium-sized company is that the leveling structure could be a little fuzzy and you just have to accept that. So maybe at a big company, there's really, really hardcore levels like level one, two, three, four, five, or level A, B, C, D, E, F. But at a medium-sized company, my personal experience when I was being sold on the company I work at right now, they're saying everyone is flat. Everyone's a software developer, maybe Based on your skill level, the dollars that hit your bank are gonna be a little differently, but title-wise, title-wise, everyone is gonna be the same. But one month after I started the company, they rolled out this new five, six level hierarchy thing with various different levels. Because I think I mentioned this before, but you cannot maintain a flat hierarchy in any kind of organization after it gets to some point. I don't think it makes any sense and it's just not helpful for anyone. Even though people might say flat is good, it's not good as you grow. So I think it's just something you have to accept. Like this new rollout of all the different levels at my personal company, it's been a little fuzzy. Sometimes people aren't sure what's expected of them at their level, what's expected of them to get to the level, the next level, but that's fuzzy and they're all trying to figure it out. As long as the place you work is trying to make an effort to help you grow, get you to just the next level of your own personal progression, and they do that for everyone. As long as there's an effort, it's pretty good, but don't expect it to be very clear. It's always gonna be a little fuzzy because they're just starting it. Like one month after I joined, they just announced all these different levels, and of course, no one's gonna be clear about it. Third 
third, third, third point I wanna make, and this one's gonna be a little subjective, is that scale is a little more tangible at a medium-sized company. So I have a couple data points to back me up on this, but these are just me and my personal friends. One of my friends that works at Google says that scale is a little intangible to him because it's already been solved. There's so many tools and systems that he can compose and use of at Google that he just picks and chooses what he needs and he doesn't really have to worry about scaling from anywhere to billions of people. This, it's not a problem he has to worry about. But I think at a medium-sized company, there's a specific scaling problem because the nature of the company is growth, right? When you're first starting a project, you have to handle your first 10,000 people that maybe gets into the hundred thousands, millions, tens of millions, and every single step is a subsequent scaling step that you have to solve for and encounter new problems with. And if you get the chance to work at a medium-sized company that's actually growing a lot, you might actually be dealing with these scaling problems and having, you know, it's actually fun to handle some of those problems. But if you just get put into like a really big company like Amazon, you might feel like all of that is solved for you, even though they operate on an insane scale. So this kind of scaling is tangible thing. It's a little subjective, but one observation I can say is that if you work at a medium-sized company, scale is a little more tangible as you work up than you could experience at a bigger company. Fourth, I think fourth, I don't know how many more points I have, but I have a fourth point to make. Fourth point I want to make is that there's going to be a lot of cooks in the kitchen at a medium-sized company. So my personal experience is that the people has outgrown the code base a little bit more. Like any other big company, it starts with one big app. People usually call it some kind of monolith and it starts getting harder and harder to contribute to because hundreds of people are updating the same exact code base. So people start trying to create microservices, scale out a little more intelligently. Not only is it better for growth, but it enables people to actually work on different things in parallel. But at a medium sized company, there's gonna be a lot of cooks in the kitchen, maybe like hundreds of people working on the same monolithic code base and it's really tough sometimes to break that apart so for me the feeling is too many cooks in the kitchen because the way hiring has happened you know since i've joined the engineering account has doubled something like that but the code hasn't caught up with the level of people that have been joining the company so the net effect is that they're just all these people trying to change very very similar things and bumping into each other so you're gonna have if you're gonna have that sensation a lot. Maybe at a big company, everything is split very well. You work on your specific service or whatever service you provide or your product. But at a medium-sized company, it's just almost like a free-for-all, everybody working towards one thing. Gets a little difficult. All right, I don't wanna to make too many more points, but I wanna close with some personal thoughts about just work in general and your own personal progression. But don't typecast the characteristics of one company to be very good or very bad. There's nothing inherently good about working at a small startup. There's nothing inherently good at working at a big size company. I think the only thing you can measure is that if there's still room for your personal growth, and that can really happen anywhere. You can grow personally a lot anywhere. It's, you know, it's situational based and you make the most out of it. You could be stuck at a startup or you could be killing it and growing personally very well at a big company or you could flip-flop the two. So whatever the situation is, you know it's still worthwhile for you to be there if there's a clear way for you to personally grow. Wherever you're at, I don't care what company it is, big, small, medium, if you don't see your own personal progression, somehow if, you don't be, if you're not set up for success, you're not set up to actually grow as an engineer or manager or however you wanna grow, if you don't see that, then you have to consider other places. But other than that, you can get that experience anywhere. It doesn't have to be specifically at different size companies. So if you're trying to choose the best, best place you wanna work, just pick the place that you can see very concretely that there's personal growth for you. And as long as you still have that, I personally think it's still worthwhile to be at that company. And at the same time, if they pay you well, treat you well, give you a nice work-life balance, all that things are just nice little cherries on top. But the number one thing is if you can still grow a little bit, you don't feel stuck in any way, you're still probably in a good place. Just my personal two cents. All right, guys, that's all I have to say for this video. It's probably been a lot. I'm, I think maybe this is gonna be 15 minutes or maybe even longer, but I know it's been a while. I try to make videos more often, share. Hopefully this kind of stuff is still helpful. Sorry if I was a little repetitive. I already can tell I was a little repetitive, but I don't wanna edit this video too much. So if you watched this, if you watched at this point, thank you very much. If you have any comments, 
concerns, general questions, just put them below and I will answer them. If you have any very, very long questions, focus. If you have any long questions, feel free to email me and I'll do my best to respond to you. Hope everyone has a great rest of the week and take care. All right.